Hey guys, what's up? So today we'll be starting with the second half of the chapter electricity. And we'll be dealing with electric circuits, different types of circuits and types of materials which can conduct electricity or can't conduct electricity. So first up, we have electric circuits. Electric circuits are defined as the unbroken or continuous flow of electric current and generally uh, electric circuits consists of uh, three main components first is the switch which controls the flow of electricity through the circuit second is the battery which is the source for the circuit and third is the bulb which consumes electricity from the battery and we have two different types of layouts for electric circuits. One are the open circuits. So open circuits consists of a switch bulb battery, the same, and it's open, means the circuit, uh, the path is broken. So the current, the current can flow through the components and therefore the light bulb is switched off. And in closed circuits, as you can see, the path is not broken. It's a complete path for the electrons for the current to flow. And we can see that the bulb is growing brightly. And uh, now we have three main different types of circuits. First is the simple circuit. Second, the series. And third is the parallel. Now we'll go delve into each of them. Simple circuits are circuits which are simple, as the name suggests. So that it consists of just one bulb and connected uh, across a battery, which is the source. And yep, that's it about simple. Now we'll move on to series. In series, the bulbs are connected. More than one bulb is connected one after the other. And that's why the name suggests series, which means one after the other. And in this, if you remove a bulb or if a bulb stops working, so all the bulbs in this series circuit will stop working. As you can see in this animation, this bulb is removed and every each and every bulb stops. So that's one special feature of series circuit. Next up, we have parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, we have uh, two or more bulbs connected, one below the other, or connected in parallel, as you can see. And the special feature of this circuit is that even if a bulb is removed or a bulb stops working, so uh, all other bulbs do not stop working. They, they work normally, they function normally. So that's about circuits. Now, a main a big question, which I guess you must have come across, that can electric current pass through all types of materials? And the answer to this question is absolutely no, no, no. Electric current can't, can't pass through each and every type of substance. And that is why we have categorized substance into conductors and insulators. Now, conductors are the substances or the elements which can conduct electricity or which can allow the flow of current through them. And one of the main, main uh, examples are the copper wires, as you can see, our house wiring, our circuits are made by these wires, these copper wires, and also aluminium, iron, all these metals conduct electricity through them. So that is why they are termed as conductors. And now insulators, these are the substances which cannot conduct electricity through them. For example, wood, glass, silica, plastic, anything. And uh, these can't conduct electricity through them. That's why they are termed as insulators. And coming on to the last topic 
in this chapter electrical safety yes we nowadays we use so much of electricity so many electrical appliances around us that we need to be careful we need to be safe while handling those appliances yeah so that we don't end up like this dude here who is completely roasted alive by the electric currents so we need to be safe we need to be cautious while using electrical circuits which is everything and now we'll be dealing with how to be safe and how to give help to the person who has suffered from an electric shock firstly you should switch off the main power supply if the person has been uh, has come in contact with a switch or a wire make sure to switch off the power supply as soon as possible then secondly remove the connection from the switch make that switch isolated just remove the connection so that there is no current flow through the switch and thirdly push him or her away using non conducting tweezers this step is the most crucial step because many many people uh make the mistake of just pulling or pushing him or her using their own hands remember that we humans are also conductive and if you touch them you may also get an electric shock so push him or her away using non conducting materials like a wooden stick or a plastic material or something and fourthly and the most important thing give him first aid and take him to the nearest health center so that he or she can be saved uh and yeah that's about it for this chapter thank you so much have a good day